It's Saturday the 23rd of May 2015. This is a chart of Regis Resources. Uh, it's been underperforming quite significantly for the last couple of months. The last chart I did of this was about uh, 20th of March, I think, and I talked about this level here being a, a pivotal level. If it could um, get up above that, it was a sign of a bit of recovery and strength. Um, and that's been sort of roughly where the top's been, and it's trending downward. Um, there hasn't been a lot of conviction in this sort of area here, but the sellers have definitely been in control. Uh, and I just feel like yesterday it might look like it's sort of going to go back and test maybe the, the ultimate low here at a dollar dollar fifteen. Um, I was just having a look through a presentation that the company put together um, about oh, two months ago, which I think answers a couple of questions. So this presentation was put together on the 11th of March, um, and I think anyone who's sort of worried about their investment it might be a good idea to have a read of it. Um, they go into quite a bit of detail. One thing it just does have going for it is the reserves, two and a half million ounces. Um, that's it's pretty significant. Um, seven or eight years worth of production at the current rate and there's a lot of resources there um, and if they can convert those into reserves we're sort of looking at a 10, 10 year mine lives uh, on average roughly um, across the board. Um, they're sort of trying here to show that they, they have met the guidance and they, um, they've been uh, probably severely dealt with. Uh, they're at the lower end of the guidance range that they gave for the financial year but look like they'll just sneak in. Um, I think a lot of the problems this year were in January and February, so that showed in the the March uh, quarterly report. Um, but even though only four million was produced in January and February, the quarterly showed that about ten was produced in March, based on the the overall figure was closer to uh, fifteen. So March still showing that the company is producing quite a bit of cash. Um, Moolat Well had previously been sort of the shining light, I think, um, and producing above the reserve grade which is only about 0.95 ounces. And it had consistently been producing sort of 1.1, 1.1.2. And it'd been looking at 26 to 30,000 ounce production quarters. And it just looks like it's coming back toward the reserve grade. And most of the commentary in the in the um, company report suggests that that may be the, the ongoing trend from now on. Um, so that was previously the one that could be relied on for uh, strong production and uh, low cost Garden Well's been a bit of a, a disaster, I think. Um, you can see here the, the lower end of the guidance for the year was 145,000 ounces, and it look, they're thinking they're probably only going to get 113. Um, they should see a little bit of improvement next quarter based on these figures. Um, here you can see they've gone into all the issues. Um, it's one thing I like about the Regis presentations is they do tend to go into a bit of detail um, in the quarterlies as well. So you can you can get a feel for it, and you can be ahead of the market if um, everyone's still um, banking on a bit of old information. Um, yeah, you can see the operating costs. They, they don't produce on an all-in cost basis. I think they have sort of uh, a bit of a opposition to it. So it's not as clear as some of the other companies, but they have their, their cash costs pre and uh, after royalties. So you can see that in the June quarter, they're looking at producing, um, they're trying to get the cost down, maybe another $100 an ounce. So if they are able to do that, um, they should be producing another, <clears throat> uh, I'd say eight, seven to eight million dollars in cash. Um, so March quarter was 15 million, and so if they can produce another seven or eight million dollars, you're looking at 22, 23 million in cash generation. So they're still, it's still pretty good. Um, this chart wouldn't suggest that the, pro the company is that profitable um, at at these prices but it's still the Australian dollar gold price is still sort of 15 30 an ounce ish so they're still making good money um, even with their pretty poor production performance um, some of the mine extension work is uh, quite important as well because I think uh, the Erlston and uh, dog boulder deposits have got quite high grades so um, if they're able to add those into the mining schedule for next year or the year after um, that should boost the overall grade of uh, production at, the, at those mines. Um, so this is, I think it's important for anyone invested to have a read of this presentation. Um, here you can see uh, the Erlston total or grade. It's, you know, 2.3 ounces, so it's significantly higher. Um, and Dog Boulder here is, is, is 2.9, but it's only in the resource, uh, inferred resource category. 
but it's a lot higher than the um, the grades for the rest of the uh, the mines, the overall grade. So back to the chart, yeah, I think we're going to head back to maybe this 115 level, but good opportunity here, I think, still long-term investment in gold in a good gold company. Um, you sort of still have to back these guys to turn it around, and I think a lot of the market has uh, has stopped backing them. Um, but I think there's still there's still significant cash being generated, and it's a good time to invest.